Have you ever found yourself at a crossroads of sorts? So many ways that you can go and you just wish you had someone who saw the bigger picture and could tell you what to do. Well, as Christians, you guys, that's exactly what we have in the Holy Spirit. But what does that look like? And how do we even begin to hear God's voice? Well, I've got eight different ways that the Holy Spirit's helped me discern what He wants to speak to my heart. And I hope they help you. Well, first of all, I think it's important to acknowledge that I have never heard the audible voice of God. I wish I could say I have, but it has been more subtle than that. In fact, as a young pastor's wife, I remember getting really offended when people would say, God said this or God told me that. And I think, who do you think you are? He's never spoken to me. But what I didn't understand is that God had been speaking to me. Jesus said that if we belong to him, his sheep hear his voice. But for me, that didn't happen overnight. Instead, it's been an ongoing process. And the first thing that I think we need to do is to ask God for wisdom and then expect that he's going to answer. This part is so important because I think that the enemy of our soul wants to convince us that we've got to figure out Christianity on our own. That, you know, once we were saved, the rest is really up to us. But no, nothing could be further from the truth. God longs to have a personal friendship with you. He wants to be the one who gives you the wisdom that you long for, the wisdom that you need. I think this is so important because sometimes as Christians, we buy the lie of the enemy that says, yeah, you're saved by grace, but you got to figure the rest of this life out on your own. But Jesus said, listen, guys, I've got to go away so that the spirit can come. And when he comes, he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit of God comes and dwells within us. And if we'll quiet our soul, if we'll ask for wisdom and expect it, He promises to give it because here's the deal. The Holy Spirit has the bird's eye view of our life. He sees the past and the future. He sees the present. He knows all of the things that are going on and he sees clearly the way we should go. So why would we ever want to do it on our own? The next thing we need to do is tune our hearts to God's voice. You know, I really wish, I really wish that there was like a Google map, spiritually speaking, that you could just type in your question and there would come clear instructions as to which way you should go. But that's exactly why the Holy Spirit came to lead and guide us. But we've got to understand a couple of things. First of all, his voice is not discerned naturally. It's spiritual. And so that means we're going to have to tune out some of the noise in order to hear him. One of the most important parts of learning to be led by the Spirit is being sensitive to those little nudges. I don't know about you, but I kind of expected that if the Holy Spirit was going to lead me, there would be sky writing, you know, that somehow there would be things written in clear ink so I would know exactly what He wanted me to do. But instead, instead, He's that still, small voice that Elijah encountered in 1 Kings 19. When God said, I'm going to let my glory pass by, Elijah said, but his voice wasn't in the wind that tore apart rocks and shattered things. It wasn't in the earthquake and it wasn't even in the fire. Instead, it was in a still, small voice. And I found that true for me as well. I call them nudges because often I don't even know that it's God that's kind of impressing me or sort of just gently pushing me, giving me a strong impression or a feeling, I've got to do this thing and I need to do it right now. You know, when I follow the impression or the nudge, it's not usually until afterwards that I can say, that was God after all. But in the training of of responding to those gentle nudges, I'm learning to discern and recognize God's voice when he speaks. Well, number four, my mama always said, mind the checks. What are checks, you ask? Well, it's that sense that something's just not right. That, that even though I felt like I had clear direction for whatever reason, God saying, mm, not yet. Maybe it's wait a while. Maybe it's no, don't do it. Don't do it. 
But what I found is that checks are usually, they're usually designated by a lack of peace. I might have had peace at the time of the decision, but as, as the days go by, there's just kind of a turmoil. There's a second guessing. And I have to be careful because I tend to second guess myself a lot. And so I even have to weigh that. Is this a check from the spirit or is this just a check from my flesh who's just too chicken to try something new? I found that when direction is from God, it usually strengthens over time. Where conversely, when maybe it really isn't God's idea, but mine, well, the leading just gets a little vague. It actually lessens over time. And so in some things, I've learned to just sort of sit with what I've sensed God saying to really find out if it's him or just an idea I had on my own. Another important aspect of being led by the Spirit is number five. Test the message. Does it line up with Scripture? Listen, I might have a really strong impression that God wants me to do something, but if it goes against his word, then I really need to set it aside. Uh, Because I'll tell you what, impressions on their own can lead us into great error. There are people who have joined cults, who've left the true faith because of this really amazing feeling they had when they entered a certain place or encountered a certain message. But if it doesn't line up with God's word, then we need to be careful because as Paul said, we should not be unaware of the devil's schemes. So test the message. And if it aligns with scripture, then hey, you may want to actually run it by some godly friends. Other things that may confirm the message is providential circumstances where certain things happen and doors close and other doors open and it just confirms what God's already been speaking to your heart. But I also think it's important to bring to the table what Catherine Marshall calls sanctified common sense. Because you know, God's will is not difficult, nor is it often complicated we can increasingly become assured that this is God's will for us. Number six, watch for repetition. It's interesting how often God tends to confirm his word to us by sending the same message through different channels. Perhaps it's a a theme that you hear repeated in sermons, in podcasts, even in your conversations with friends. I like how my friend Marla Campbell puts it. God's like your mother, and if you don't listen the first time, he'll repeat himself. And isn't that good news? Which brings us to number seven, which is beware the Spirit's withdrawing. You know, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, and he will not force himself on us. He will not demand that we obey. But I have found that it's important to realize that I can grieve him and I can quench him by simply disregarding him or allowing things in my life that that really short circuit his work and his presence in me. And so I'm learning to be sensitive to those times when I kind of feel the Holy Spirit just step back a little bit. Maybe that, that sense of anointing that was on something kind of begins to lessen and I I have to stop and ask, Lord, is there something that I've done that has grieved you? Is there an attitude that I've allowed? Is there um, some shortcuts that I'm taking that are displeasing you? Because there's nothing more precious to me than God's presence. And so along with David, I find myself praying, Oh Lord, take not thy spirit from me. I appreciate what Oswald Chambers once said. He said, if it's been a while since you heard God speak, Go back to the last time that you obeyed and obey him there and more revelation will open. So let's not grieve the spirit nor quench his work in us. I need him, don't you? Finally, take the next step. You know, so many times I can get paralyzed by the immensity of the task and so afraid that I'm going to miss it or mess it up that I can get frozen rather than taking the next right step that God has clearly shown me. You know, Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And in the Old Testament, those little oil lamps gave just enough light for the step you were on. And I have found that as I take one step of obedience, he illuminates the next. And as I do that, he illuminates the next until I find myself 
exactly where he intended me to be. Aren't you glad that God hasn't left this all up to us? Instead, he's given us the Holy Spirit to lead us. If we'll just cultivate a sensitivity to his voice and a willingness to obey his instruction, he will get us where we need to go. All we have to do is be willing to be led. God bless you, my friend.